hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name's jason newland this is relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety and panic attacks please only listen when you can safely close your eyes there may be background sounds only a few little bits the uh, sound of my neighbour turning on their bathroom light a ridiculous amount of times <laughs> but other than that nothing too much I'm recording this at 5.25 in the morning purposely with the hope that it will be fairly quiet Andre's asleep so I'm hoping he's going to stay asleep for the duration of this recording if he wakes up then I'll have to press pause and stick him in the bedroom or something and yeah this is going to be a relaxation session and a sleep session because these are the f my favourite well the favourite ones that people uh, seem to like so it gives you an option to relax plus the option to drift to sleep and there'll be two different versions one with music one without music and the one with music is, the music is provided by Kevin McLeod and the details are in the description of the podcast the one with music will be two hours long the one without music will be I've no idea how long at this point it could be anything up to 40 minutes 50 minutes long it might be 20 minutes long it depends uh, it's uh, I am trying or aiming to make more longer recordings in a sense of you know for these type of recordings 20 minutes doesn't seem enough it may well be enough but just I think it's nice to have the option to listen for you know 40 minutes or so because that that seems like a nice amount of time I think 40 minutes sometimes 50 minutes anything more than an hour of me talking is it's doable I mean I can do it it's just I'm worried about the people listening. I mean, does anyone want to listen to me talking for an hour? <laughs> if so, go to my Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast. <laughs> Every day I talk for an over an hour on there. I just talk drivel and then nonsense for an hour. But on these recordings, it's more focused. And the focus is relaxation. The focus on this recording is also to help you sleep. And if you're listening just for the relaxation, then I would say advise to set your alarm to wake you up because a good chance that once you're in the flow of the recording and you're kind of joined that wave of increased comfort splashing against your brain and massaging your brain 
you just may find that you get washed away into a deep healing sleep. So in a way the the only real side effect of listening to this is you may fall asleep. And that might be might not be what you want, so it's worth just uh, keeping a track of that. Of course other side effects that you want would be relaxing. And there's so much involved in relaxing. There's so much involved, so many positive benefits to you, to your body to your physical health, to your mental health benefits when you relax. And I know that some people, some people will actually say out loud to another person that they don't know how to relax or that they can't relax. Okay, well, if you hold on to that one, that they can't, they can relax. But their belief, the stronger that they believe that, the more chances that they will resist. So if you're in that category, as someone who believes something that is it's not really true but it you've had enough evidence you know you've had enough evidence to believe it um, for example if if someone was to spend all their time around thieves they would undoubtedly believe that no one is to be trusted and everybody is a thief even though that thinking is completely wrong they are wrong the evidence they've been presented with thus far could have used the word thus far before is that they're correct because that's their experience so if someone has experienced pretty much stress and tension throughout their life the idea of being able to relax may seem alien to them I've worked in quite a high stress environments in the past and I've worked in very relaxed ones as well So, but I've worked in high stress and in some ways you know, I had to stop doing that job because I got ill but in some ways it was quite nice being in that kind of environment because it was alive It was, there was lots of energy not always positive energy admittedly but there was you know there was definitely uh, it wasn't yeah it wasn't boring that often because of the energy which was weird because the actual job itself was quite a boring job but because of the pressure because it was a sales environment it it meant that boredom didn't get a chance to really set in but 
there again, boredom isn't necessarily an antidote for stress. Boredom can cause stress, can increase stress. So boredom, you know, doesn't mean you're going to be relaxed. Unless you choose to let go. So there's going to be people listen to this. Hello to all of you. Uh, some believe in that they can't relax. Um, but I would say that that's not true. Not in a sense of liar, liar, pants on fire. But just... Everybody relaxes at some point. And relaxing doesn't mean necessarily sitting in a chair and just melting into the chair and your mind going completely blank and you know the the sensation that the roof of your house has just you know come off and there's this big sun five times bigger than normal shining on your face you know, it's, it can feel like that. It doesn't have to. And sometimes it's the small bits of relief that can be the most pleasant. the sensation again sitting into a chair when you get home from wherever you've been if you've been doing walking you've been out working you've been you know you've been on your feet or you've been busy you sit down and the chair supports your body And that taking a deep breath is something that people have been doing probably for millions of years, long before, you know, a yogi came along in the 60s and said, you'll take a deep breath and it relaxes your body and your mind. It's people already knew to automatically do that we already know how to breathe we already know how to appreciate the sensation of breathing whether it's through your mouth or through your nose. I personally don't think it really matters which way you breathe, if you breathe through your mouth or through your nose. Some people have only got very, very tiny nostrils. So, or they might have a blocked nose, you know, because for whatever reason, Maybe there used to be a box zone. I've got I've got a friend who he can't breathe through his nose because of uh, his nose is damaged fighting. So he breathes through his mouth. It's okay. It doesn't matter how the breath gets into your body, as long as it gets in. So this idea of mouth breathers for somehow being a bad thing. I don't buy into that. I think it's just rude, actually. Ruder people to be rude towards people that breathe through their mouth. Why is there a big gap there? It's not just for eating, you know? What else is it there for? If it's not for eating, it's for breathing. Which 
means we can make use of it. I quite like feeling the the air when I breathe, the the coolness of the air. So I'm breathing through my nose now. And that's a, a particular sensation that you don't get doing anything else. I mean, literally, you can do a million different things. But that's the only time you get that sensation of when you breathe through your nose and you notice it and you focus upon it. The feeling of the air touching the, or going into the nostrils and I suppose touching the, the walls of the nose, the insides of the nose. You, Got a certain sensation. And that may be different depending upon the temperature. It may be different depending on the state of your nose. You know, if someone has got a cold or they've got a blocked nose, they can't. Maybe only be able to get the oxygen into one nostril. Or maybe it's there's cooking being done. You're gonna smell. You can have that that same feeling, physical feeling, but there'll be a smell of the food. So it'll smell different, and it will feel different. And sometimes, just by focusing on your breath, whether it's through your nose or through your mouth. it really can relax your entire body. For me, there's a big, it does feel a lot different breathing through my mouth than through my nose because the tongue has got so many nerve endings and there's, I guess, all, you know, also the taste buds. But I notice when I breathe in my mouth, the air goes in, and of course, you know, the, the idea of breathing is for the air to go down your windpipe into your lungs. Sometimes I notice the some of the air seems to just bounce around my mouth a little bit, you know, sort of touching my teeth and bouncing off my tongue. And sometimes that could feel nice in itself. So in fact, I'm not in that moment really breathing in a real way I'm not breathing you know inhaling the oxygen and then exhaling I'm also almost playing with the air move my lips apart Move my jaw apart from side to side. Move my tongue. And this is invisible, you know, this, well, to the human eye anyway. This is just, just oxygen. Just air. The thing that we depend upon. 
we take advantage, not take advantage of it, but we take it for granted. Which is normal, you know, I think, uh, I think it'd be, imagine spending all your day thanking, saying thank you for every breath. Thanks for that. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for that breath, that was nice. Yeah, that was good as well. Take care. Safe journey. That'd get tedious after a while. We can feel grateful for our breath. Although that can be a weird kind of concept, even saying it out loud. Because logically, it makes logical sense to be grateful for the thing that we need. You know, we can go a certain amount of time without eating. We can go certain out. People talk about that, don't they? Well, how long can you go without eating? Uh, how many days? Uh, how many? How many hours can you go without drinking water? Which is a lot less time than eating. No one ever talks about how long could you go without breathing. So, it is something that we need, but it's also something. It could be relaxing to focus upon it, but it's also something we need to allow to do on its on its own. It needs to be automatic. And I know that you know there are yoga practices and meditation practices where controlling of the breath is part of the process practice and stuff but only during that time from a relaxation perspective it's nice to notice the breath it's very positive to appreciate breathing appreciate the never ending supply of oxygen that we have without feeling the need to try and control the breath we don't need to do that. Not, not here, not now. But there is something quite useful about being able to slow the breath down. But the reality is that will happen automatically when you listen to my voice you will automatically feel calmer not just physically also emotionally in fact you may not even notice or you may not have even noticed any kind of activity in your mind for the last half an hour as you've been listening 
to my voice just gently talking about some of the benefits of enjoying breathing noticing but not trying to control I guess a lot of the reason behind uh, what I do and what I offer is an opportunity to really let go. Let go of the need to control everything or anything. It's an opportunity to just let that stuff drop to the floor and back away slowly (laughs) move away from that stuff leave it there you don't need it There's a reason why when people go swimming in the sea, you know, a nice day at the beach, there's a reason they take their clothes off and only wear a swimming costume. They have to let go of all those clothes, the boots, the belts, the coats, or whatever, jackets. that stuff weighs you down I mean literally if we're going to if we're going to talk literally if I go to weigh myself and if I'm standing on the scales with my boxer shorts on The weight there compared to the weight if I stood on there with my shoes, with my trousers, with my t-shirt, with my jumper, with my uh, winter coat, my gloves, my hat, my socks of course, and maybe uh, a bag. Now, that's going to be a fairly big weight difference. You know, it's going to be, and especially if I decide to start holding on to stuff from the past. So, therefore, I'm going to wear trousers I wore two years ago. I'm going to wear my winter jacket from ten years ago. I'm going to, you know, start adding all that stuff on I'll end up being double my weight I'll end up looking like a rubbish heap or a dirty dirty laundry heap but when you take that stuff off let it go it's almost as if you're getting down to truth you're getting you're getting down to reality the reality of relaxation and feeling calm your natural state is to be alert but also to be relaxed knowing that you can deal with whatever life presents you. Just look at any baby when they're born. And let's remember, 
Babies don't know who we are. They're the most vulnerable humans. When we're born, we're one of the most vulnerable species on the planet. Crocodiles, when they're born, they're ready. They're ready to go. A giraffe, when it's born, has probably five minutes to learn to walk. So we're very, when we're born, very vulnerable. And at the same time, we don't know anybody. We don't know the... Okay, we've just entered the world by exiting a human. But we don't know that person. Not really, not yet. We don't know the other people that are staring at us. So we are vulnerable and we are on guard, we are alert. Look at any child, look at any baby's eyes staring at you. They are alert. You can't deny that. They are very alert. They are watching what's going on. But at the same time, they can relax so they're almost floppy with relaxation and falling asleep is the easiest thing in the world so even though they don't really know anyone and then when they do get to learn you know a couple of people who they can trust there's still other people coming in and out who they've not met before friends and family that they don't recognise that they may it may be years before they get to recognise them because they might be distant relatives or wanting to come and see the little baby but that little baby with big eyes alert looking around at all the people listening still relaxed still able to fall asleep easily which is a sign that they are relaxed because relaxation is the start of sleep it doesn't have to be but it is, you know, it, it, it is. But, you know, being relaxed doesn't mean you, you automatically have to drift off into a deep sleep. But drifting off into a deep sleep does mean that you need to feel relaxed first. feeling of the breath is so automatic I start to notice it in my chest and I'm thinking it maybe it's the movement of my chest It's only a small movement which shows me that I am very relaxed right now. I've been running for a bus my chest looks like the bottom of a trampoline with about a hundred people jumping on it and 
as you're focusing still on maybe the sensation of the, the air around your mouth and your nose. And you can start to notice it. But that feeling of breathing almost be and you know it's oxygen but it could be sleeping gas you could be breathing in something that causes you to fall asleep something healthy something safe I remember when I was about Twelve. I had my appendix out and had the operation and they put the gas mask on me and said count down from 100 to 1 and I said can I do 20 100 is a bit too high and he said oh, ok and I remember counting down 20 19 and that was it and then I woke up I mean really that sleeping gas was almost like a time machine it fast forwarded me into time so suddenly it was far, four hours later or three hours later. I was like, wow. That was good. So that sensation of breathing leading to sleeping I suppose is what always happens we're always breathing which means when you're lying down on your bed deciding to nod off and to go to sleep breathing always leads to sleeping something quite nice about the nature of the whole process and how your mind opens up when you're feeling relaxed and you get that moment where you start to realize that oh that makes sense That really, really makes sense. It rings true. And I've been, you 
you've been doing that all your life. You've always been breathing. It's a nice feeling when you take a break, when you let go of everything. Allowing you to relax naturally and slowly and deeply which results in letting go of all of the stuff from the past and embracing in fact Appreciating your breath, the thing that keeps you alive can also relax you deeply. Because let's face it, something like your breath that keeps you alive. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Powerful enough to relax your body and your mind. Easier and easier every time you hear my voice listen to one of these recordings you find that just by expecting yourself to feel calmer to feel more at peace With that expectation comes the reality that it is also fact. And you are feeling relaxation wave that you've been riding is now turning into sleep it's now leading into sleepiness and there's nothing for you to do Except ride that wave. And what that wave does it changes the landscape from being awake to being asleep. Changes how you feel as everything.
thoughts just slow down. 